What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. This is going to be the last day, fourth day on the Hustle Casino live stream. And I'll be honest with you, a little exhausted, a little tired after a pretty long week, but this is the last day to close out the Rampage week here. Obviously it has gone pretty freaking well. I have no complaints besides I'm a little tired, but uh, our buddy Mariano's in town. We're playing a 5-5 100 game, same structure as the Tuesday game or two videos ago where we had ridiculous straddles. I don't know if that's going to happen again. Honestly, $800, $1,600 straddles, it's a little too big for me <laughs> playing a massive freaking game. So maybe it'll be a little bit more tame, who knows? One thing I won't do though is I won't lock up a W. I'm just gonna get involved, going to uh, just mix it up, of course, because that's what you're here for, to see a lot of action. So thank you to everyone who's tuned into the stream. It's been incredible. The support's awesome. And seeing all the content, there's the man himself, Wesley. Hi. There he is. He's gonna just keep on winning every time because apparently yeah. poker's too easy. Poker's too easy. Hope yeah. today, today easy too. Good luck. It, yeah, it seems like it. Every single time it's easy yeah. for you. Yeah, so we're gonna hop in there pretty soon. Gonna start playing, get the cards in the air. I'm gonna buy in for 50-ish, maybe. I don't know. It all depends on how the game goes, but um, that's it. I'm done talking. You wanna hear about uh, the hands that's gonna go on, so let's do that. Let's hop right into it. Smash that like button. Last video of the Hustler Casino live stream for this week. Hit that like button. Let's kick off the final, final stream of Rampage Week on Hustler Live here with a cheers with my buddy Mariano. Haven't seen him in a while. We live basically across the country from each other. So we start off with the beer and let's get into the action. This first hand starts off with Nick limping with $5 in early position. Action folds to the small blind, our buddy Mariano. He raises to $15. Big raise to start off this stream, and let's step it up. I'm in the big one with queen seven off suit, and of course, this is a three-bettable hand, and I three-bet to 25. Nick somehow folds. I don't know how in the world he folds for $25, but all right, Mariano is not scared money. He makes the call, so big, big pot brewing here. Going to a flop of ace, jack, jack, rainbow, and when he starts off with a check, I bet $5. I'm... I'm basically just trolling. And you know what Mariano decides to do? He responds with a raise to $20. I mean, I'm sitting with queen high. I'm priced in. How could I ever fold? I make the call in position for $15 more. Obviously, just nonsense going on. And we're going to a turn which comes a 10. So it actually gives me a gut shot straight draw, which is pretty damn cool. But now Mariano decides to take it a tad serious and bets out $500. Holy moly. Big, big overbet, and I am just not one to give up here. So this might be one of the smallest hands we'll play all night. So for 500 more, let's see a river. River comes the three of hearts, Brick City. Sadly, it's not Bink City. It's not a king. Mariano now slows down and decides to check. I'm sitting with queen high. I can't realistically expect to win here, right? So maybe I can just get a 10 to fold. Who knows? But I Blast off $1,500 into the abyss, but Mariano snap folds his nine high. It's always fun taking money from your friends, right? Moving on, let's play some real poker. I have ace 10 of diamonds in the small blind, and there's an only on raise to $300. Action folds to me, and I certainly could three bet here, but I'm thinking my opponent plays a little bit snug, so I'm happy to see a flop out of position. I decide to call, and the big line folds. Going heads up to a flop of king 7 5 to spades. It's brick city for me overall, and I start off with a check. My opponent actually ends up checking back, so definitely thinking he might be a little weak. The turn comes the eight of diamonds. So now I think this board and this turn card favors me having some much more stronger hands. Obviously, I don't have anything right now, but I could rep it maybe. I bet out $500, pretty big, and hoping to just get a fold, but surprisingly, he calls. So I don't think he has a king, but maybe just a one pair holding like nines through jacks. We're off to a river which comes a deuce that doesn't change anything at all. And like I said, I'm putting my nines through jacks and maybe they can find a fold after a big bet. So I blast off. I blast off $2,400 as an over bet compared to the pot and my opponent's snap calls. Snippity snap got trapped by King 10. He waves his hands up for a fair catch for my first punt of the night. Okay, moving on, this next hand gets also a little silly. There is an onion player who limps to $5 while playing 5-5-100. I have ace, deuce of spades in early position. I decide to limp, and it becomes a $5 limp vest until Raisuke on the button decides to raise things up to $500. 
I think he's certainly capable of potentially raising light here and trying to squeeze out the field. And with my specific hand and when it folds to me, I could actually use this as a three bet bluff here sometimes. So that's what I decided to do. I'm here to battle. I didn't come here and play for a full week to just pass up on some spots. I size up to a three bet of 2300. It folds all the way back to Raisuke and this is someone who loves to battle. And he has a natural in Baccarat, and he makes the call, and let's see a flop. He's certainly a tough opponent, and I'm out of position, and the flop comes 10-10-4, two hearts. Well, I have ace high. It's sitting with a backdoor flush draw as well. I guess I'm kind of mixed between betting or checking, and in-game here, I decided to bet out $1,200, and... I clearly think I should have checked because now Raisuke sniffs out some of the weakness and raises to 3,500. I, uh, what the hell? Unfortunately, this is not great. I'm sitting with a pretty weak hand. I have a pretty bad ace. Actually, I have the worst ace possible, but do I really want to venture out into the unknown here and call out of position and see a run out with a bad hand? One of the issues with playing against tough opponents here is that he just might blast away on the turn and I'm forced to fold. It's really hard to hold on for dear life with just ace high and it's really ambitious to think that my hand's even good right now. So I decided to pass up on this spot and fold. And after that, Raisuke shows the savage bluff 3-5. Clearly, naturals just can't lose in poker as well. All right, I might be losing a few hands, but here I pick up ace 10 of clubs in the big blind. The straddle is on, and Mariano in the small blind raises it up to $600. Against Mariano here, I certainly could 3-bet, but I'm in position of him. Seems like an easy decision to just make the call. And surprisingly, Wesley on the straddle. He actually 3-bets himself to 2500 Mariano gets out of the way and folds, but I think my hand's good enough to play. It's certainly feeling a little strange as now I'm playing out of position, I called Mariano's raise, and now I have to call another raise. Ah, oh well. Let's see a flop which comes ace-jack-4 to diamonds. Flopping top pair, not so bad. I check it over to Wesley and he bets out 1500 Definitely feel like there might be some merit to check raising here, and right now, after such a small bet, I can deny equity versus flush draws, or maybe even some hands that have a gut shot straight draw like King Jack. Anyways, after thinking about it for a while, I end up just making the call. Seems like the standard play here. Turn comes the eight of diamonds. So the flush gets there, and I'm thinking actually potentially. This card might get checked through a lot. So because of that dynamic, and because I wanted to check raise early on the flop, I actually decided to lead small here for 2,600. Still thinking here I can get value from some hands, albeit it's a thin amount, one diamond holdings, or maybe a bad jack, maybe a bad ace, who knows. But here Wesley decides on a call for 2,600. And going to a river, hoping to not see a diamond, it is the deuce of hearts. Pretty clean river for the most part, and now on the river, thinking in-game that there's still merit that I can bet small. In hindsight, I'm not sure how much merit there is at this point, but I'm sticking along with the story because this is what happened. I bet out $3,800, Wesley snap calls with, as you can see, a turned set. I see the bad news, and I'm leading and betting out into a set. Instincts are really on point today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just bad. I'm just bad. All right, if I can't win with ace-10 or anything else, why not try my luck with pocket queens? I'm on the button, and there's a bunch of limpers until Marion on the cutoff raises to $200. Music to my ears here. Happy to play in position against a tough opponent here. I three bet to 700. Folds around to Mariano, and he's here to battle. Didn't come here to fold. He makes the call, and the flop comes king-8-6-2 diamonds. He checks it over to me, and I certainly don't love the king on the slot here, but I think I gotta bet small regardless of what I've got. Gotta deny equity, gotta get value. I bet $400, and, well, yeah, not a whole lot of value being had today, because Mariano check raises me to 2000 Ah, <sighs> already feeling pretty annoyed with this. I don't love facing the check raise with basically only second pair, but I look at my cards. I have the queen of diamonds. It gives me some sort of equity having the backdoor flush draw being available. So uh, I'm in here. I make the call for 2000 total and see a turn, which comes a six bottom card pairing. 
not so bad for me. It eliminates some sets that he could have, but when he continues again for $6,800, I'm annoyed. I wasn't comfortable in the flop already, and I definitely hate seeing this overbet on the turn. I'm going to let my cards go. It makes my life easy. I fold to Mariano, and now, after the fact of the stream, I see the good news. I made a good fold. He wasn't bluffing me. Just, just a full house. Very nice hand, friend. All right, as you can see from all of these hands, the night may or may not be going my way so far, but it's also been a little quiet, but that's about to change so far as I have queen nine of diamonds and raise things up to $300. Put on my left, Wesley, another pretty strong opponent. He three bets to 1,000. And when action folds around to me, after seeing him play that pocket eight hand, it seems like he's really capable of three betting light. So when opponents are able to three bet light, you should experiment with four betting light as well. We are going out into the wilderness here. Four bet to $3,500. And when my opponent makes the call, we're playing pretty darn deep. Let's play some poker. With a suspect hand, but a natural in Baccarat, the flop comes ace, six, deuce, rainbow. Not a whole lot going on for me, but... You know, when you four bet with trash, I'm gonna have to bet with trash, and I start off with a small bet of $2,000. For 2,000, honestly, my life would be great if he just folded right here right now, but that's not what he does. He makes the call, which I don't feel great about, but I'm just hoping he doesn't have an ace and has a small pocket pair. We're going to a turn, which comes a six of diamonds. Board's paired, I improve to a flush draw, so that's a little bit of equity. So let's just better equity, try to fold out a pocket pair, hopefully. I barrel big to 13,000, a little bit of an overbet here. I certainly would love to see a fold and on screen, you can see he just has four high. Definitely not a holding that I would have expected from him, but he ends up letting his cards go. Okay, I feel good. I take this down with queen high, finally win one on my end and it comes in a four bet pot. The following hand we're going to talk about gets a little fun. Ron starts off the action. He raises the $200 from under the gun, seeing him play a little snug so far today. Anyways, Mariano to my right, three bets him to 800 and I peel the perfect Israeli Ron hand, queen do suited. Let's get after it. I four bet to $2,000 with all due respect to Ron. I'm doing it for him. It folds all the way back to Ron and he ends up actually calling and Mariano calls too. Another four bet pot with another shitty hand. <laughs> Let's see what happens. The flop comes king 10 seven rainbow. Okay, I whiff city here and this is a board that I would expect that my opponents would connect on a lot as it's a four bet pot. Rangers should be a little more narrow. Anyways, action checks to me and I like I said, I expect one of them to hit on this board. Clearly that's not the case, but I'm basically just giving up until the turn comes a jack. Wow. Now I'm open-ended, which is really fun. And Ron decides to take the lead and bet out 2,500. This forces Mariano to fold his garbage holdings and look at Ron's stack. There's not a whole lot much more to play for. And now I begin to potentially think about going all in here. The only issue about going all in here is that I just don't really see Ron bluffing a whole lot. So when he's not bluffing, he's value betting. And if I go all in, then he's probably going to call with all of his value, right? So my line jamming here doesn't make a whole lot of sense, although it does put maximum pressure on all of his hands. Anyways, I decided on the passive route on just making the call. And let's improve. The river is a jack. Damn it, that is a whole lot of nothing. What's really surprising now is that on this card, Ron decides to slow down and check. Seems pretty strange and I would only expect him to bet again, unless he just has like a king that would be afraid of a jack somehow. Anyways, I've arrived here and I'm sitting with queen high with his hand and he has less than a pot sized bet behind. So I'm gonna close my eyes and just ship it hoping to somehow fold a king potentially. So when I go all in, Ron is immediately not happy. From my point of view, I don't know the cards yet and I think this is really great to see. Ron's not happy, I just put them all in, just fold bro. But the issue is that we can actually see what's on screen and see how strong his actual hand is. So. When you look at trips and top kicker, 
I'm not sure what he's thinking about for so long. In real time, I actually think there's a chance I can get him to fold, but after a few minutes, you know, I'm praying for it still. I still have faith, but we can see the cards. We know he's never folding trips top kicker, but he did tease me for a while, and ultimately he does make the call. It's another punt, and I'm surprised. Like I said, when he shows his cards... What, what, what took you so long, Ron? Really? <laughs> Such a good hand. Nice hand to you. You make the maximum off of your own hand. I guess that's why you have this hand tattooed on your arm, because you get donks and fish like me to just give it all away to you. Nice hand. Two hands later after my punts, I'm back in the streets battling. I have ace-10 offsuit and decide to limp in for $5. A few more players limp it over to Nick, and he raises to 300 Folds around to me, and this is a hand I don't want to fold, so I make the call, and the hijack player calls as well. So I'm out of position, three ways to a flop of queen 10 5 rainbow. Middle pair, top kicker, it's, it's not a horrible spot to be in. Action checks to Nick, who continues with a bet of 700. It's actually a pretty large sizing, but I'm never folding my specific combination here, so let's make the call other player folds. Turn comes the bank ace. Really nice to improve the two pair, but Really not nice to see that Nick checks back. So no money comes in the middle here. Action goes check, check. And when the river is an eight, this card doesn't change a whole lot. Literally five minutes ago, everyone just watched me bluff it all around. So maybe it's time to bet big and bet for value. Use my image to my benefit as potentially if I bet big, Nick would think that I'm tilting. So with two pair of a strong hand, I decided to overbet to $4,200. I would probably get a good queen to call, and Nick thinks it over for a while with exactly that, a really good queen. Actually, the best queen possible. Anyways, I would love to get paid and win at least a small rebate from the Israeli Ron punt, and he does end up calling. He's a non-believer, and I show my hand, and yes, Nick, I am confirmed a turn guy. I win a small chunk back, and I'm back on the comeback trail. After that hand happens, this is one of the last hands of the night, maybe the highlight of the night. Let's get into it. There's a $400 straddle on, so game kind of got off the rails and bumped up. Anyways, Ronnie limps in an early position, and I have ace nine off suits, and I think it's time to battle. It's time to get involved. I put in a raise to $1,500. Raisuke, none other, the only person that would be rich enough to straddle the 400 he decides to call, and Ronnie calls as well. So just us three to a flop, which comes 5-5-5. Five, five, five. Well, on this board, I feel like I should have a pretty good advantage here. Action checks to me, and, you know, I have aces, kings, good over pairs, all that stuff, which is pretty strong on this board, and quads are also really hard to flop. So with ace high, I decided to bet out $1,000. Don't think I need to bet big here so far. And surprisingly, both players make the call. So interesting developments here. The turn comes a deuce. It's basically a Brick City turn for everyone. And action checks to me once again. And multi-way here in this spot, the decision is to either continue bluffing or just check back and take ace high to showdown. Well, you know, I think the checking back option seems pretty boring. So I'm going to go blast away and represent a big hand that I might have. Unfortunately, I don't have that right now. I blast out huge to $8,000, about the size of the pot. And upon this bet, Raisuke thinks about it for a while. And he goes over his thoughts, it seems like. And then he ends up actually raising to 20000 Damn, what a spot to be in. Ronnie gets out of the way, and now it's my turn to act. Look, guys, I, I took this line. I bet really big on the flop and turn because I wanted to rep a strong hand. Now it seems like I might have run into a brick wall, but the issue here is that Raisuke is a very tricky opponent and he can be check raising here with all sorts of hands. He has like three combinations of hands he can be doing this with. Certainly he can have quads. That's a hand that he can have for sure to check raise. He certainly can have some pocket pairs that wants to protect their full house. Or, last class of hands are some nonsense hands as well. Some random bluffs, airball bluffs, and uh, yeah, I've seen him play a little bit for the past few days, and clearly he's capable of pulling sick bluffs. At this point in the session, I am stuck. I'm here to gamble. I want to represent exactly what I was trying to represent this whole time. So I close my eyes and put $12,000 more in to call. Yes, I am calling 
here with Ace High. Not because I want to represent or think Ace High is good. It's because I want to represent like aces and kings and queens, all those really good hands that I could have. So we're going to the river, which comes a queen. Well, that's something, but it really doesn't change the board that much. And here's the cool part. Raisuke goes all freaking in. Uh, I was ready to bluff it off in this river, but when he jams 75,000, I'm going to fold ace high. I snap folds. I guess I'm glad I didn't bluff the river because, of course, Raisuke shows 3-5 how he started the night owning me with 3-5 as a bluff. Ends up flopping quads and getting maybe a little too much money from me as I had nothing there. What a spot for Raisuke. Very nice hand, sir. That's a sick flop. All right, this wraps up the um, the four-day Rampage week here at Hustler. We did not end up playing at all. The game snap broke the first time uh, where we haven't played on after the stream. Left with this guy. Somehow, every time I play streams with them, we both don't end up doing exactly great. Today was a little bit bad. There were a lot of spots that I uh, didn't need to lose a bunch of money on. Some spots maybe I could have won some money on. And overall, it feels bad to get whacked. Uh, something about just like winning a lot of money earlier the first three days, like it doesn't really affect me that much. But when I lose, it hurts. I'm bummed. I'm disappointed in myself. A lot of different things, but it's fine because if we look in the broad perspective of things, I'm really lucky to be able to even do this. But in the moment right now, a uh, little sulking because the stream just snap broke. Uh, the game snap broke. And here we are. So let's go over the numbers. I was in the game for 190,000. Out of the game for 144,025. So yeah, today I just got absolutely dicked down and it feels bad. And uh, I ended up winning like $80,000, give or take, after four days, which is incredible, amazing, awesome. That's how I should feel, uh, even though, you know, I didn't end off the stream the right way. I ran into quads and I called 20,000 like a fucking idiot. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but overall, the, the, the Rampage week on the stream was a success. I finally get to win in, in this place, in this building and on live stream. Um, the money I won was nice. Uh, the goal was to make like over $100,000. I ended up profiting like around 80, which is close to it. It's not the goal, but the number's arbitrary. It's just trying to show up and win and and uh, losing. I forgot how, how much losing hurts because <laughs> I fucking hate it so much. I just hate losing more than winning, but that's it. Thank you everyone who supported the streams. I know you guys are watching this like two months late, but if you watch the streams live, you're in the chat, you're supporting, hating, do whatever you want. Thanks for tuning in. It means a lot and I'll have more opportunities to play here for sure in the near future. But after this, I'm gonna go back to tournaments. I don't know, I'm gonna go back to Florida. So the next video you'll see might be in Florida. Oh, it might be in Morongo actually, we'll see. Got some cash games lined up, some tournaments lined up, but there's always gonna be more content coming on the way. So yeah, shout out to Carl for editing this video. Shout out to the Hustler Live production team for putting everything together. It's always well run. And uh, I'll see you guys next time, peace. <laughs>